Hi, this is Mike Raywolf, Pony Illustrator and Programmer, and you're listening to The Ambient Show. Hello and welcome to The MBS Show, episode number 90. 90, yes, 90, not 19. Th- those are two different numbers. But I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hello there, Norman. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you doing, man? Uh, could be doing better, but considering everything else, I'm doing all right. That's good to know, that's good to know. And also joining us today is Kitsune Risu. Yo! Hey, hey man, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Like, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm like a 1 or 2. So, really great. Oh my. I'm guessing <laughs> life problems then? Oh, everyone's got life problems, Zoe. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. They're just, they're just, they're just like the most enjoyable thing in the world. But you know what? I'm still happy. I'm still here. And we're still going to have a great show because that's what I do. Right? <laughs> Indeed. Uh, boys. So anyway, our guest for this week is a returning guest, a returning champion, I would say, Mike Greywolf. Hey guys, it's great to be here again. Thanks for having me once more. No problem, man, no problem. So before we officially start the show, I need to ask you the four important questions. And I have it down here where I know your favorite pony and favorite episode. So I want to see if it changes or not. So favorite pony... Yeah, it's still a tie between Twilight Sparkle and Fluttershy since the last time. Uh, the rankings have changed a bit for me, uh, but Rainbow Dash is still that last, so <laughs> that must be really changed. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, I, I wasn't around for your first interview, but you know, I'm getting to know so much about you. Like... <laughs> oh my. It's, I, I just want to say it's really refreshing that, you know, for once, someone didn't say favorite pony rarity, you know. <laughs> What? You have that a lot? It's <laughs> not in my experience. You don't have a problem with Rarity being best pony, right? I, 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 just, I just somehow just run into so many people on the show, like, when they ask, what's your favorite pony? You know, Rarity, yeah, Rarity. I'm just, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of her. I want to beat her face. I'll have you know, that's I'm going to kill you. Best pony. <laughs> Even my rankings, Rarity is up there. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, like, like it should be, like it should be. <clears throat> So, before my co-hosts kill each other, what's your favorite episode? Since last time, it's still the same episode. It's suited for success. A rarity episode. (laughs) Well, that that, that much absolutely is is true. Because uh, rarity is indeed uh, an awesome character. And um, suited for success is, for me, the episode that has the most adult storyline in the the whole show so far. Oh, so uh, idea, re- regarding the the woes and the dilemmas of the the professional creative person uh, in facing the demands of their their customers, so yeah, Suited for Success is an episode that resonates a lot with me and the things I do. Mm, I agree because Suited for Success is life itself. We we do stuff; people are not happy. <laughs> You know, that, yeah, that that's much is especially age. true for whoever does creative work. Oh, web, true, if, any, uh, if any of you are web designers, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> not, not even web designers, man. Graphic artists. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I have a friend. I have a friend who runs a graphic design company, and he does nothing but complain about the horrible clients who don't know what they want or know too much, but actually don't know anything. It, it all just boils down to people not knowing anything. <laughs> really. True, 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 true. But anyway, with those two questions out of the way, we shall move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. Well, I write nothing here, but actually there is something. Um, starting from this episode onwards, my guest host here, James Cock, has been upgraded to um, co-host. I got. Hey, I just congratu- got my. I just got my, <laughs> I got congratulations, my I'm a, man! I'm an Alicorn ho- co-host now. Yes. <laughs> no, no, you are not an Alicorn co-host. No. You got, you got crush my dreams part. wide on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need another Alicorn. Then I cannot OC. be a pretty, pretty princess. No, Uh-oh. we don't need another Alicorn OC on the show, man. Yeah, God we do. You it. can fly. You know, James can fly <laughs> over the show and sprinkle magic down upon everyone. Oh, man. No. Like it's. It's the best thing for him to do. I can see him doing it. I'll sprinkle something alright, but it won't be magic. (laughs) 
But anyway, congratulations. Uh, I would say congratulations. No. Um, anyway, welcome to the crew, James. I, I hope you'll enjoy Thank your you. insanity to madness. Oh, you mean there is more enjoyment than the one that you already have? Ooh, the fun just begun. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> But anyway, if you're expecting us to review the episode that just came out, um, we won't be doing that here. Unfortunately, the reason why is every time I do that, it takes as long as the whole episode itself. So we will record something new and post it up on the YouTubes, exclusively on YouTube. Besides, uh, those people that we might bring on the on the podcast, they might not have watched the newest episode, so it would be very rude to spoil the episode to them if they haven't watched it. And also, for those who just want to watch the show, avoiding spoilers, uh, it's it's a way for you guys that if you want to watch the review, there it is. But if you don't, you can just stick with the regular show. True. Or you can wait until you watch it and then watch the review. Oh, yes. Do that. That's much better. <laughs> we need to get you on, Kitsune. We need to get you on. But anyway, that's housekeeping. Well, it can be I, said I that you're always going to spoil someone. Eh? Yeah, Even true. one or two years from now, there's, <laughs> there will always be someone who hasn't seen the episode then. Yet, so <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> Dumbledore dies in book seven. <laughs> oh, spoilers. But anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. Oh, boys. In today's news time, the Pony Card Project has come to an end. If you have been in the Pony fandom since the early 2012s, you would have remembered Pony Card, a My Little Pony team kart racing game for the PC. The project was done by fans, and it was inspired by the game like Mario Karts. Unfortunately, the project has took a turn for the worse. As of November 14, 2013, the Pony Card Project has officially ended, according to... Hoppip, a programmer for the project, people were getting burned out by making huge tracks such as Whitetail Woods, especially the track modelers. And I think this was the biggest reason. Some of us started university or got jobs and no longer had the time to work on Pony Cart. Links can be found in the show notes. So I'm going around the table. James, what do you think? You know, I have never been a big fan of Mario Kart, um, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I, I appreciate it for the thing that it did, but I was very happy when I saw they, there was going to be a pony version of it. Uh, because nowadays, if you want me to try a video game or something, put ponies in it, I want, and I will definitely try it. Uh, the other thing is put Mass Effect on it, so I will definitely give it a, give it a try. Uh, I think it had... A much better ending than any of the other projects in this fandom. I mean, it didn't go a cease and desist from Hasbro, that's for starters. Mm -hmm. And it definitely didn't go a cease and desist from Nintendo, which could also happen, because, I mean, it's clearly the same build as Mario Kart. Uh, I think it makes sense. A lot of projects start with a lot of um, energy and a lot of motivation and a lot of good intentions, but then people clash into each other and they have an impossible to avoid ending. This one ended in a very quiet way, very civile, civile. and uh, I think we have to appreciate it for that. Personally, I'm happy that another group of people took it or took over it and they said that they're going to try and finish it, but uh, to be honest with you, this feels like it's going to be one of those projects that just keeps bouncing left and right to different people and then it's, it's finally released and nobody likes it. <laughs> okay. uh, which, which is what happens with many other video games. So, uh, personally, I, I hope it doesn't go that route, but it's, uh, I'm happy with how it ended and how, where is it going now? Alright. So, Kitsune, what about you? Well, it's always kind of sad when, you know, someone's personal project ends in general. I mean, with, Regardless of the, the content of uh, what it is, like a game, I'm, I'm actually really surprised, you know, like uh, what you said, like they did not get cease and desist um, letters from two big companies. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, despite the fact that it was uh, one of the surviving stories of of pony-related games, it uh, had to crash. But, you know, that's life. And these people, they're doing it for fun, you know, they're not doing it for money or anything like that. So... If it had to happen, it had to happen, right? Mm -hmm. True, 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 true. But as you said, someone's picking it up, so, mm -hmm. you know. And what about you, Mike? 
Well, this all seems extremely familiar to me. Um, as you know, as some of you might know, I don't know if all of you know, uh, I was the devel I was the programmer for one one other pony game project that was Cutie Mark Crusade: The Dash of Adventure, that was also cancelled and exactly for the same reasons as this one. Uh, life has a way of getting in in front of many things that we really want to do uh, and that happened for the three of us there were three of us and um, for life issues, matters and limitations we just found out that we we were no ha no longer having the the same fun doing the the things that that were supposed to be fun for us and i guess this is exactly the same that happened f for these people once it starts being treated as kind of a job it st really stops being fun for uh, for many people and that's what happened to us, so I understand it perfectly. A cease and desist would still not be reason enough for uh, for them to stop. If they really wanted to make a game, they could just rebrand it and recycle the engine mm -hmm. and still make it through. But uh, if the, if it's no longer fun for them, then there is nothing that, that can be done. You can't control the way you feel about things, so uh, it's just natural that they wanted to stop. It's perfectly normal, and uh, I understand it perfectly. If I could uh, talk with these guys and send them a word of support, some of them might be feeling a bit down over the whole thing. It could be that some of them didn't even want to stop, and that's depressing. I would give them, those people, a, a word of support because I understand perfectly the situation they went through. Understandable, understandable. I mean... Um, getting a cease and desist, well, sucks, but you could recycle it again. And, well, giving up on a project, that's even worse. There's a certain fighting game that I remember that did just that, and right? now they recycle and they they have even better support. I know, but you know support. what, you know what, um, at least Pony Kart here has been picked up by the community and they're trying to build up on what they have, and the code is open source, so if you... Are interested in trying to build your own pony racing game? Go ahead, and I just hope this. I, I just hope this that the pony card game does not become another Duke Nukem. Mm. Uh, about uh, the open source thing, uh, I just hope. I'm just hoping that the the guys who release that code only release the code and not the graphics and sound assets mm -hmm. for the game. Because if that happened, then they they could get in trouble, in legal trouble in the future. Uh -huh. Because the, the code does not violate any copyrights, of course. But uh, it could sp still be argued that the, um, the, the graphical assets could be the basis for a cease and desist uh, action from Hasbro. Mm, okay, okay. Oh, well, interesting fact. Thanks, thanks for the info because I got no idea because I am not a game developer. Of course. But anyway, let, let's move on to a cheerful topic. And the next news topic is Mega Pony is out and playable. For one game to another, the Pony Fight version of Mega Man has been completed and it's available for download. Mega Pony is the Pony Fight version of the popular side scrolling action game Mega Man or Rockman if you are from Japan. The game is created by Kaho. Kaho. <coughs> Kaho. Mortarios? Kaho. Mortarios? Is that how you say his name? But anyway, um, the game has original stages, unique weapons, and it has an awesome soundtrack. If you are a fan of Mega Man or enjoy playing 8 bit side scrolling games, give it a shot. Links to the game can be found in the show notes. And I'm going around the table again. So, James. My experience with Mega Man is very limited. I have only finished Mega Man 2, and I I played all the way uh, up to the last stages of Mega Man 9. Um, which, when I tell people about that, people say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's perfect, because those are the good Mega Mans, you know, the original <laughs> NES games. And uh, and then I hear the, 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 the others saying, oh, no, Mega Man X is the best, and then they just start fighting into each other while I just shrug in the background going, who's right? <laughs> um, I uh, From what I heard, 
Mega Man fans are very happy with it. Pony fans are happy with it. And Pony fans and Mega Man fans that are both things, they are really happy with it. <laughs> um, I didn't play it, but I really want to because, once again, put ponies in it and I will definitely give it a shot. Uh, because personally, I never cared for Mega Man, but I always uh, appreciate it as one of the standards of 8 bit video games. And the 8 bits wouldn't have been, like, we, didn't, we wouldn't have the video games that we have right now if it hadn't been for those games like Super Mario, Mega Man, Zelda, Metroid, and, and the such. So, I think everyone should give it a shot just to appreciate the work that these people put into it. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Kisune? Well, um,. The trailer looks good. <laughs> so I'm guessing you haven't played it yet? I have not had a very good relationship with the Mega Man series. Let's just put it this way. A lot of a lot of my childhood was, you know, thinking it was a regular fun game and realizing it was hard as... That's not a word! And I, I actually once ate a controller in frustration. <laughs> You ate After, a controller? <laughs> yeah, I ate the controller. It was an old, you know, Super Famicom controller. So it it was kind of hard to get down. It's, you know, you, old kind you of ate, plastic. You ate I, it? I ate the controller, yeah. I was, I was, I was oh, wait, so wait, pissed wait. off with Mega Man, you know. Uh, were you also really hungry and your family couldn't afford food? <laughs> well, like, I what was, the hell? I was playing for about two days straight because I was trying to finish the first level. Of Jesus the Christ! And I was not sleeping or eating or you know watching <laughs> or any of the usual stuff that kids do at seven. So I ate the controller in desperation, and then I had to be hospitalized for. Uh, about two weeks, and the first thing I did when I came out was try to beat that level again, and it, it still didn't work. And I was just, you know, that's my life, really. Okay, um, well, um, in, Soviet, in Soviet Russia, the control is in you. Mm. Well, I'm glad I don't live in Russia then. Oh, boys. Okay. Uh, well, um, if that's the case, I better not play this game. So, what about you, Mike? Well, uh, I'm also in the same boat as Kitsune regarding, regarding not having much experience in the Mega Man franchise. Uh, I only, I, I am ashamed to admit that until very recently I had never played any Mega Man games. Uh, I tried out Mega Man 9 recently, a few months ago, and I was extremely, extremely frustrated by it. I'm not a fan of very hard games. I played games for the experience, mm. and uh, I don't find it fun with the ga- when the game th- th- throws very hard challenges at me just to prolong the, the playtime. Mega Man is like that. Of course, some people dig it. I don't. Um, but, well, regarding the, the, the Mega Pony project, I w- had the chance to, to watch the, the trailer and a few videos, as uh, some of you did, and I really have to give a big thumbs up to the art, the pixel art, to the artistic side that uh, achieves the feat of being able to capture both the spirit of the Mega Man franchise, the 8-bit art of the franchise, of the games, of the original games, as well as being able to put some pony sprites with tons of personality in it. I really was delighted by the graphic look uh, of it, by the the pixel art aspect of it. Uh, And that captured my attention. But I'm not going to play it. (laughs) Because it's Mega Man. <laughs> oh, it does. It does look gorgeous. I mean, yeah, I'll have him. It, like, like okay. it, it looks really great from the start to the end, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing I'm the only one who played a bit of it. So, well, I love the Mega Man game. Uh, I understand why people get frustrated because it's a uh, how do I put this? The game it punishes you, yet it teaches you about how to play the game. Like, oh, there's a hole here. Next time, don't jump in the hole. Or, the enemy will come here. Okay, I'll avoid the enemy. Well, that, that's trial and error. That's a, that's a really, really lazy <laughs> type of gameplay. Not element. really. I mean, in my opinion. Well, in my oh, wait, opinion, wait. Norman, Norman, like you... Like I, I'm going to do something. I think, I think it was one of... Uh, we had a conversation a while back where you were complaining a lot about nonsensical quick-time events in games. Was that no, you? I don't think so. I... 
I can appreciate the quick time event, but I don't think so. Not me. Oh, who was the guy? I think it was someone else, but yeah, okay. Then it was someone mm. else. Then no problem, sorry, but no, but weird memory. Okay, we, with the Mega Man series, it's always been that way. And in this game, I can tell that oh my goodness, this is hard, and it feels Mega Manish. So good job, and the level design and everything, it feels good. Is is it as difficult as the regular Mega well, Man? Would you say? I would say it's up to par. And the best part here is you can change the difficulty settings. If I remember right, you can change it to easy, normal, and hard. So I was in normal, and it was hard. Well, let's just say this: the game is fun, and it's not that hard. If you played Mega Man before, you'll be right home. But if you want a really hard game, play the Angry Video Game Nerd. <laughs> that is hard, even though it's on normal. Ah, boys. Nah. If you want Yo. a hard game, play... Uh, no, 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 no. If you want a hard game, play I Wanna Be The Guy. Now, that is difficult. I Wanna Be The Guy. That, I've heard of that. That is difficult. That game is so difficult. It's it's not considered a platformer. That, uh, that video game is a puzzle. <laughs> because there is only one way to solve every single one of the stages that they put you through. And no other. That video game is really hard. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and and I would say that uh, solving that uh, those ki- that kind of puzzles usually relies on memorization, pure mm-hmm. memorization, trial and error, and, and, and muscle memory. Yeah, muscle memory yeah. because it's like, oh, I got to jump at this exact time when you know this enemy is there and that bullet's coming here. So it's kind of annoying in the end because it's in in the end it's just like following mm-hmm. patterns, right? I think, and that's to yeah. me that's not that's not really a game. To me, that's just I'm not really fond of that type yeah. of game either. You know what? You know what? I'm going to say screw it. I am actually downloading Mega Pony right now. Yay. Like I just decided to just I'm I'm just going to give it a <laughs> shot because why not, it's right? Free. I'm going to play I'm going to play it live right here on the show and you can hear me scream and eat my <laughs> mic because I don't have a con- I don't have a controller. Don't eat my I have I, I have it. yours. <laughs> oh. Okay. You really should you you, oh. you surely have a problem with Food because you just want to keep eating things that aren't supposed to be edible. I don't need a guess, man. What's wrong hey, with dude, you? Dude, dude. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next. Moving on to the next. That doesn't exp- <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. No, it does. But moving on to the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Mike Grey Wolf. He is a DeviantArt artist, and well, uh, as you as you, he mentioned before, a game programmer for the Cutie Mark Crusaders, uh, Dash of Adventure. How are you doing, Mike? Are you having fun yet? I'm doing fine, thank you. Uh, um, I shouldn't really complain, but I do that all the time because it's my thing. Last time I was here at the show, uh, I had recently uh, moved from Portugal to Brazil. I am from Portugal, and I am currently living in Brazil, and I'm hating this country more <laughs> each minute. And I, <laughs> I would really like to go home, but I really can't at this moment. So that uh, bites at me all the time, uh, permanently. permanently. But uh, I really can't complain, so um, I guess I'm doing fine. If anything else, I've been having lots of time to to improve on my uh, on my illustration skills. So that much is good oh, for that's me. That's awesome to know. So, Mike, did anything happen since the last time you were on the show? Not really. Regarding my my place in the fandom, I became a bit more known as a, an illustrator, as a, a pony illustrator. I've been working a lot to to improve my technique and uh, making contacts in the, the in the fan art community and uh, the fan creation community. Uh, it's been very very interesting. Uh, journey for me um, and I've been able to to achieve a level of uh, of skill where I'm finally able to to sell my work so at least that much is good oh, that's for awesome. me that's awesome so uh, I'm looking at your page right now and uh, I'm noticing a few things um, you draw ponies but not only that you also draw Nintendo characters like I see you draw Mario, and also Pokemon, and a bit of OCs, if I would say? Well, 
I must confess something. Artists are normally seen as very creative guys. They, I see, I look at some works that I see in Divine Art, even fan fan art, and there's a really big creativity in some of them that fascinates mm -hmm. me. Uh, and I have to confess something about myself uh, as compared to those people. I really admire those artists because I'm really, even though I have uh, some skill and uh, I have been able to acquire some skill in illustrating, I am not a very creative mm -hmm. guy. I don't have a lot of imagination regarding creating new looks and new situations and being able to to imagine them in my head and doing something that is awesome looking for other people. So what do I do? I mostly I mostly rely on other people's uh, on other people's requests. Mm. Hmm? I, I go to people that that are my friends that that are important to me and who don't really have this this skill the skills needed to put their visions to paper and I ask them what would you like to see drawn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I take those requests and I work with them and that's the um, the whole basis uh, on which my my skill my technique has been built uh, so what you see, what you see in my gallery is the result of Lots of people asking, asking lots of people, my friends asking, "Hey, why, why don't you draw this thing or or that's this Pokemon or oh, I had this idea for an awesome drawing, but I wouldn't be able to do it. So why don't you do it instead?" Uh, and I rely a lot in on those on that kind of requests to to bring me forward. Mm -hmm. yeah? I'm really, I'm really afraid that I'm not a very creative oh, person, no, and that is the main reason why I don't call myself an, uh, an artist. I refuse to call myself well, an artist. If you say so, but to me, the art that you're doing, whatever it is, commission requests or whatever it is, you have talent, and well, you not calling yourself an artist, well, <laughs> that's your personal preference. But I, I can say that you are really talented at doing art. Well, uh, and. Uh, I'm afraid that I can't also I, I I cannot also call my pieces art no. because art requires an original thought, an original feeling from yourself that you're trying to to express in physical form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, w what I'm doing is just translating the feelings of others and the visions of others mm -hmm. into that physical form. So I don't call it art; I call it illustration. You know, you, you say that, but isn't it also the job of the artist to interpret ideas and thoughts and emotions onto a medium? And that's the basis of art. Would you not agree? Like the, the idea of art is to communicate uh, ideas, right? As it were, uh, to communicate a, a single moment in time or a thought or an expression. And when any artist gets inspired by anything. Like, for example, you know, you're just sitting down and looking at beautiful things in nature. You're inspired by a little, you know, a children's show to draw stuff. Everything, every form of art is simply an interpretation by an artist of something else. And, you know, ability to communicate that, that idea. The sources of where you get it from, be it from, you know, someone giving you a suggestion... Uh, it's your job as the artist, as the creative person, to translate that idea from an idea into a physical form, which is the drawing. So I would have to say that you are definitely creative. And I don't think you should be calling yourself not an artist when quite clearly it seems like you are, at least to me. So that's that's my piece. I agree with Kitsune in that. There are many different ways to call yourself an artist. Uh, if you want to specify that you're, you're saying you're an illustrator, yeah, that's cool. But in the end, illustrators, comic artists, uh, music composers, writers, uh, 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 3D modelers, uh, the guys who do the paper crafts and the, the little sculptures, plush, plush creators, we are all artists in the end. It's like this big umbrella that covers all of us. So it's like artist. Yeah, you're an artist, but if you want to call yourself an illustrator, that's perfectly fine too. 
Well, it all depends on the, which definition of art you take, right? Because the, there is not one single definition of it. And the, the definition of it is more strict. And it's actually something that I strive to, to achieve. But as I said, I am not a, an extremely creative person. I hope to be able to, to stimulate my, my creativity through the... Through, when I'm when I am able to draw more different things to put my vision to paper in more different ways, maybe I will able I will be able to to elaborate visions of myself, uh, my own visions to put there. Um, until then, I my my work is a mere interpretation, and sometimes it's even a two t- a two tiers interpretation. For instance, if someone asks me to draw a picture of Rainbow Dash, um, I'm working on their vision. They, they may elaborate and tell me, oh, draw Rainbow Dash flying or doing a loop-de-loop or something like that or going around the cloud. Uh, but that person is also building upon the basis that the show has built for it, for it. They are not creating something original. They're just recreating a scene that might appear in the show. Uh, it's not their character, even. It's Rainbow Dash. It's some, uh, a character that is already in the imaginary of, uh, of all the fans, and they're just trying to appropriate a bit of the, of the show by having their scene, their vision, uh, be materialized into, um, into, uh, into a medium. Uh, in, in my point of view, that uh, limits the originality and brings it a bit outside the, the realm of art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And since my, my work is twice removed from the original pony work, and uh, this talking about the, my my pony works, my my, my pony illustrations, uh, then it's twice removed from what I conceive to be art. I could so, give you lots of examples of what I consider to be art on DeviantArt. There are really, really breathtaking uh, um, works that require an incredible degree of inspiration and the an amazing degree of skill to be able to put them into in, into the paper, into the into the computer, or whatever you're working on, and that is what I believe people sh- people who aspire to be artists um, should be really going for. Until then, I cannot really consider myself an artist. Well, fair, fair enough. enough. Fair enough. Well, all right. I think you're a, bit, you're a bit hard on yourself, maybe. Well, uh, that's the only way I can improve that. Right? Right? But you know what? Ah, no, you, you have to encourage yourself. You don't, you, don't, you don't slap yourself in the face and go like, I'm not an artist. I can't draw. Of course, I can't slap myself yeah. in the no, face, no, but no, I, no, can't, no, no. I can't also I can't pat myself in the, on the back either. either. I can't Mike, even. Mike, Mike, do you, consider, do you consider the Sistine Chapel ceiling a work of art? You're uh, going to be too far with your hyperbole. No, I'm not because it's a metaphor. If, if, it's not a fiber, it's a because, metaphor. Because the Sistine Chapel no, it's actually neither. It's a direct example because the Sistine Chapel was commissioned. Someone told Michelangelo to paint that. So Yeah, but you know what, what, what told them how but to you know, do it. but you know no 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 but you know what's the other thing that the Sistine Chapel has? Four hundred years of history preservation and analysis. It it has time. You cannot I take something and judge it right in the moment that it's made, it's been made, because then you have modern art. And as many people, uh, many of those who know me, what I think of modern art is that we are judging it way too quickly and it's bullcrap to go ahead and say, oh, this is a piece of art that is going to last forever and then next week nobody remembers about it. You need to give things time. You cannot judge no, something no, no, no. and say... All, all I'm saying all I'm saying with that point mm-hmm. is that just because a piece of work doesn't come from the brain of the original artist does not mean that it's not an art. Just because someone gives you an idea does not discount you from being an artist. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it all depends on what, how specific uh, the I mean, church, the church, <laughs> were, uh, oh, well, you've got, you've well, got an because argument. Because they put God you. here, and if you and they put Adam there, and they put a little some little angels on the borders. Uh, well, that limits a lot uh, the the interpretation work of the artists, right? Of Michelangelo. Yeah, exa- exactly, that time. exactly. It's that interpretation that you have. It's that kind of creativity. There's many kinds of creativity, and you know, you're working towards a single kind, that's true. But I consider it as self-improvement rather than trying to build yourself up to something that you think you aren't. You are an artist, my friend. I'm not going to take uh, more for an answer. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> okay, you, know, you know what? This is the last time I com- I'm complimenting you. you know? <laughs> like, hey, you do good. Shut up. <laughs> oh, well, all right. Okay, all right. Anyway, uh, so putting that aside, Mike... <laughs> What are your tools of the treat? Like, do you use um, Photoshop or do you use Pintos I? What are your weapon of choice? Well, uh, regarding software, I used to to work with pen, to, with Pintos I. I never used Photoshop mm. in my life. I admit it. I used. I started out by by exploring other kinds of tools. I started out by doing vector work, but I, I then find out that it was really not for me because I'm not patient enough and I don't have the right mindset to make it work properly. Uh, I used Inkscape at that time. When I started going for raster work instead of vectors, I used GIMP. I never used, uh, used Photoshop because I don't believe in piracy and I don't have the resources to buy it. So I started exploring other tools. I found about Paint Tool Sci and it really... Uh, worked with me. It really, uh, it really fit in with what I wanted to do, and I stuck with it with quite a few months, even years. I st- uh, and I progressed a lot with that tool. Paint tool size is a wonderful tool for beginning, for starting out. But once you want to do something more elaborate, you start missing the the tool set that other more elaborate. Uh, software applications have, uh, such as Photoshop, for instance. This is the main reason why main, many people uh, end up using Photoshop, even though they most of them end, end up pirating it for be, to be able to use it. Uh, in my case, I didn't want to do that. I really didn't want to, so I explored other different tools, and I ended up switching to Manga oh, Studio. Video. That's what I'm currently using. So, uh, Manga Studio is a really, really, really cool the, um, tool that has um, many of the of the tools uh, of the tool set that people miss in Paint Tool Sci and have in um, and have in Photoshop, and it's really directed at illustrators and manga artists and comic book artists in general. So I'm really enjoying it. And if you're a, an illustrator or an artist or whatever you want to call yourself, um, I really... And the, you're working with Paint Tool Sci because it's cheap and uh, you, or you're working with Photoshop because you're pirating it. I recommend that you try Manga Studio because... It's almost as cheap as Paint Tool Sci and has most of the the tools in Photoshop that you ever need. Mm, okay. I really recommend it. Uh, other than that, I use a medium-sized bamboo tablet. I really would like to to upgrade to a to a Cintiq, but right now it's impossible. I mean, it's, it's no problem. Like everybody wants the Cintiq <laughs> that I know. Everybody wants the Cintiq. <laughs> Um, same thing is the one with the screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the one you I, can I know write. someone who has that. I know someone who has that. And he says it's awesome. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, Kitsune, do you have something similar to that? No, oh, hell no. You got a thousand bucks for me, man? No, did I remember you saying that you have something similar? Or was yeah, that? I, I have an Intuos. <laughs> oh, no, oh, if, if that's the case, it must be Tommy then. Oh, okay. Because he no, was no, no. About- I think I think Tommy was like he also wants a Cintiq because everybody wants a Cintiq. Oh no 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 yeah Tommy was uh, talking about uh, an altern an alternative um, you know a screen tablet mm. drawing thingy and 
I can't remember the name then, but um, yeah, it was an al- it was a cheaper alternate version of it. But I don't know. I I as as I mentioned um, on the last the last time I was on, mm-hmm. uh, I I actually prefer drawing on a regular tablet now because I got I've gotten used to like looking at you look, looking straight ahead while I'm drawing you know down and I don't know. It's just it's just something that you get used to after you know a lot of practice of being poor and <laughs> being unable to afford a better tablet, but yeah. Oh, well, I guess it's one of those situations then. But you know what? Um, it's not the tool, it's the artist. That's the thing. It's because not the tool, it's what you do with it, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. True, as, true. as as so many go- you know past girlfriends have told me. <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> And but- that's why I'm currently single. Mm, that's right, ladies. <laughs> oh, boys. But you know what? Uh, we haven't heard from James. What do you think? Well, okay. Uh, I will answer your question, but then I will elaborate on that. I don't wish to have a Cintiq. Oh. Uh, a Cintiq is it's a tool for a, for a like professional artist or professional illustrator that's been hired by companies or like by, uh, by the big bucks. To do uh, to do stuff for them. So of course, to uh, answer to that demand, you really have to have a good tool for it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I think that us that either work with fan art or commissions for the, uh, the the small market, the small people, we are okay with uh, either a bamboo or a, or a, or an intos or a whatever you can get for under three hundred dollars. However, it doesn't matter the type of tablet that you have. It doesn't matter the tools. It matters the talent. Mm-hmm. I have met people that do amazing work with uh, with a bamboo. Like, do, do, have you seen those um, title cards, fan made title cards of each one of the episodes of seasons one, two, and three? Uh-huh, that yeah. it, it will be like uh, uh, the title card for Sonic Rainbow. Like, if the episodes have title cards. You will um, you will see this before the episode starts, and they give the the, the title of it. Mm-hmm. It will have a very cartoony esque uh, picture, and then the the person who wrote it, the artist that does these title cards, he uses a bamboo, mm-hmm. and his artwork is amazing. It's not the quality of your tool; is what you do with it. True that. True that. I'm looking through your gallery, right, and I'm actually seeing that there's uh, qu- you do quite a lot of fan art for um, you know stuff like everything, like uh, mentioned before. You got My Little Pony, you've got uh, uh, Mario, which uh, I hope is a Smash Brothers reference. Is that because that would be awesome if it was? But it seems like your gallery is you know a lot a lot of things like from from popular media. You know, you, you do a lot of, of fan art. Well, have you not considered, you know, doing stuff uh, like more original, you know, s- stuff of your own, really? Well, of course. Um, you see, I have uh, my own, uh, my own characters and my own universe uh, in my mind. I've had it for years, but uh, I guess it's still waiting for the right. Um, for the right moment for it to be unleashed uh, for for the right moment in terms of talent and in terms of skill and in terms of opportunity but uh, why not why not develop it now you know i mean as an ongoing process rather than you know waiting because if you just wait it it'll, it'll stick in your mind forever but if you at least get it out there there's a flow of uh, I'm, stuff i'm i may end up dying and not being <laughs> able to get <laughs> that, that is <laughs> and man, and that that is depressing i know that uh, that is like that, that is the you you might as well use that for an excuse not to do anything <laughs> i i got to go take a piss but i might end up dying so i'm just going to sit here <laughs> you know no like you, well, I mean, no, but okay, that's so not that is not what I was going <laughs> to say. Really, not 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 not. <laughs> what I was going to say that I might end up dying, not being able to to bring the, those ideas to fruition. Uh, the thing is that I'm I'm currently having a lot of fun uh, doing what I think, and uh, I'm being able to improve myself while making other people uh, happy through my work. 
that is uh, quite important for me. But it's not always. I know that is not something that is often appreciated in, the, in its own merits. Because if you see my gallery and compare, uh, for instance, the number of favorites. Mm-hmm. The, the works that are more, most favorite, that are most appreciated, are the ones that are more familiar, that have more familiar characters, um, and that work on familiar concepts on, and things that people want to see. Hmm? Because since that is so, I tend to float a bit, and I'm still trying to gather some some bit of notoriety and f- make a name uh, in the in the fandom and in the deviant art community uh, I tend to flow towards those alternatives and uh, as I said before I have uh, a bit of a lack of creativity which um, ends up working against me because I end up with the impression that my ideas are not good enough to stand there upon their own two feet. You, you understand? But you know, Mike, I understand what you're trying to say here, and I do respect your opinion. But the thing is, you are very talented. Your art, or however you want to interpret it, you have a really awesome style. You, you have that style that people can really appreciate. And you know, if you can appreciate what you do, it's kind of hard for other people to appreciate what you do, no matter what drawing you do, is the internet. You have to remember, it's the internet. People will always latch on to things that they know. And right now, you have to build your own persona online or build your own personality. So to get people to like you, to get people to know you, or to get people liking what you do, besides the ponies and the Nintendos and whatnot. And you know what? Maybe you have to use the Nintendos or the ponies as a kickstart. But you know, it's not a problem. It doesn't matter. You know, this this brings up an interesting topic. And give me a second to find a good segue. So, Mike, do you have anything to promote besides your art? I just wanted to to bring more people to to NeoGAF because that's my my main community and uh, they they are deserving of all my love and dedication awesome, awesome. <laughs> and, is a good and uh, yes com the 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 premier games uh, gamer community on the internet that uh, has a big pony fan community so you'll be you'll fit right at home if you're a gamer and a pony fan you'll feel right at home there all righty then it's not easy to get in, but it's even harder to get out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty then. And, you, you know, I, I'll try and put it in the show notes. And you, you know what, Mike? Thanks for being an awesome guest. And you just gave me a really good topic to talk about. And, well, let's move on to topic time. We rarely do this. But, you know, topic time. It's official art versus fan art. Why people like the official art better and why people like the fan art better. So, Mike, why don't you start off? Well, um, th- that is the age-old uh, issue of uh, canon versus fanon, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, official art, uh, of course, defines the reality of the fandom, eh? but is also very limited in the in the way that in the way that expresses it, that reality, because it has to be faithful to itself. Eh? Mm-hmm. F- fan art is able to explore the reality of the of of the canon in different ways that are really sometimes off limits to the official artists. That is a, a, a big advantage that it has. But even so. Uh, that there are very many ways and sometimes underrated ways that official arts can can be more varied. I don't know if any, any of you read the, the My Little Pony comics. Oh, I do, I do. Yep. Yeah. Do you, do you like them? Oh, I love it. Yeah, uh, they're, they're pretty entertaining. The, I, I really think they're awesome. When they're awesome, they're amazing. When they're not so awesome, they're... Uh, <laughs> they're <true. laughs> Uh, but like, uh, I, there is there is one artist um, 
who always uh, sticks out in the My Little Pony comics, and I'm probably going to get the name wrong because I am I'm so sad that Norman, Yo. Norman, I'm going to go grab the comic. Just give me a second. Um, Andy Price, Katie Cook. About Andy Price. I think, yeah, it's Price. yeah, Andy Price. It's, uh, it, I was like thinking, wait, Katie Cook. Yeah, but no, wait, she, uh, Katie Cook's the writer. She's the writer. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, who's who's the one who always works with uh, Katie? Andy Price. <laughs> Andy Price. Yeah, Andy Price's stuff uh, really comes through, especially in that. You know, Rarity's mini, mm. uh, little mini episode micro. of uh, micro little thing. Uh, that, yeah. That so issue is really nice. amazing because it has a, a really, really great panel work. It's mm-hmm. really very imaginative and uh, it really shows off uh, a mastery of the of the comic form. Uh, and it's something that I, feel, that I was surprised to see in official art because uh, at first when I when the comic was announced I I thought oh man they're just going to use the same old vectors <laughs> and put it in new poses and there we go but no they they gave the chances of the art for the artists to work with their own styles for good and for bad because there are really some bad artists also working on that. Uh, you see the first issue of, of the micro series, uh, the one with Twilight. That's really. That's bad. not a word. <laughs> that's really bad. Well, uh, you're not holding back your punches, are you, Mayu? <laughs> no, no, no. And uh, I, I figure that's that's uh, only natural because um, because they were starting off with the uh, with the comic, and maybe they didn't have enough. Uh, they didn't. They had. They hadn't had the time to to select artists based on 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 their merits, on their skills to to do the work on this comic. And and maybe many artists, many professional artists, were going. My Little Pony. Wait, are they really asking me to work on My Little Pony? <laughs> yeah? uh, and they didn't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah? So we have what we have here is Andy Price, which luckily is an awesome comic artist and a pony fan, mm-hmm. because this was a known fact before before the before the the comic was even started. For instance, Thomas Thomas Zeller. Thomas Zeller was the the artist for the for that issue that I said was. That's not a word. <laughs> um, <laughs> he did that one issue and nev- then never appeared again. Why? Well, because it was shitty, or because they don't, didn't want to have him again. I, I or think because- he had no investment. Like you know, they just said, you know, let's just do an episode, and like he did, it and it's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going through the motions with the with the comic book stuff. But you know, like it's the people that come back. You can tell that are having fun with the comic, especially right. That um, um, that. That do a better job, I, I feel. Mm-hmm. Did you did you also see the the micro series issue of for the Cutie Mark Crusaders? Oh yeah, I, I have, I have, I have, no, I, I have, have I have, I have not yet. But please feel free to talk about it because I love getting spoiled. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm not talking about the plot or anything. I'm only talking about the art style, and the art style for that one is really, it's really amazing. It's it's done by an artist called Ben Bates, um, and he has a very dynamic, dynamic, fluid, very, um, I, I would even say, um, sketchy. It's a sketchy but very fluid and very energetic style that really looks- gives a lot of energy. It was very adequate for the the, the cutie Mark Crusader issue. He also did the Pinkie Pie issue of the micro series. Yeah, uh, that, that that art style that you're talking about. You you say that it looks like the art style of a classic uh, kids novel that you will see in the 1950s, like very classic. A uh, uh, line shading, very soft shading. That you can see the lines of the of the pen, and the the, the lines of the uh, of the tool they use on the picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I was telling that this artist Ben Bates, he did both the the Pinkie Pie issue of the micro series that was number five, and the Cutie Mark Crusaders that was number seven. And you look at his work in number five. And uh, he had the really, he started out with a really conventional w- style with the black outline and and the flat and flat shading, 
that he, it seemed like he was going through the ropes or playing it safe mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, with that issue. And uh, you see him two issues later with the, the cutie Mark Crusader, and the style is completely different, and it's for the best, for the, for the better. And it's much better because he just let loose. He, he picked up his own style, he, he let his own style uh, transpire into the work he was doing for the comic. And that, and that really, really showed. It, it was a great work. And if more fan artists were allowed to do, to do work uh, on an official outlet such as this one, I think that we would be able to see some truly marvelous work. You, you know, you do say that, but what makes any difference, really? Because official art or non-official art is still art. Only official art is endorsed by Hasbro. Like, okay, I'm just going to put the example here. John Jaseko, he does awesome pony art. And also um, CI, CSI Max, Mad Max, she does awesome works too. So what makes any difference? Like, to me, art is art. The difference between official and non-official is... Um, the style, how Hasbro or how the big boss says and how it's supposed to represent the company. And fan art is just more freedom to the artists. Like, for example, Sibzi, she did a few Pokemon arts just for fun. And, well, she put her own style in and it was awesome. Norman, more free, um, but also less responsibility. Uh, yes, that's, that's, true, that's, that's true. That's a well, very big point. Well, you know what? Because... Who the hell gives a crap about responsibility when you can do whatever you want with fan art? The good thing about fan art is that, yes, it gives you freedom, but the bad thing is that you don't know what people are going to do with that freedom. Mm. Mm-hmm. However, it depends on you whether you want to follow the, per- the people with responsibility and the people who don't. For example, if you follow a guy like Jan Animation, you know from his record you're going to know you're going to be safe that he's going to do good things with uh, his fan art he's mm-hmm. not going to do uh, I don't know I don't want to say that Rule 34 is re- being irresponsible because there is good examples of very well drawn Rule 34 done by people like John Joseko who does also clean artwork and has been works uh, has been doing works for uh, conventions like Atril mm-hmm. or like like Megasuite so uh, which is one thing that don't many, no, not many people forget. Those who draw Rule 34, they also draw clean artwork. Mm-hmm. They don't just draw one thing or the other. No, but, but that's where the freedom thing uh, takes takes part. Yeah, true. But, you know, another good example of um, fan art working for Hasbro or working for the big companies is Wheel of Fine. Because sometimes Wheel of Fine hired um, the fan arts like um, Pixel Kitties here. We, we all know who Pixel Kitty is, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, she, I know her well. Mm-hmm. She is an official Mighty Fine artist on Wheel of Fine. So yes. her work, bo- it's borderline fan art, but Hasbro has given it the thumbs up. So her work is kind of official, in, in a sense. Hasbro okays it, and it's done. The T1000 um, with Derpy... Um, give me your muffins. That has been okay by Hasbro. So it's borderline, maybe. I don't know. But if Hasbro okays it, is it official? Maybe not. But it's still a cool design. If Hasbro okays it, if Hasbro okays it, it's a case of uh, uh, official art. Because w- going back to the commission part, uh, Pixel Kitties didn't put those designs because, oh, hey, I made this good design, let's put it up. No, she, I'm pretty sure she put them there up by, com, uh, by commission. I don't like, think so. Um, uh, it, Will it, of, no, if she works with Will of Fine, Will of Fine gives her a list of things no, that no, she um, could draw. She picks from that list and she draws No, no, no. Uh, from what she told me before was uh, how she works is she basically does the design, send it to Will of Fine, Will of Fine send it to Hasbro, Hasbro give it the okay and bring it back and print. And sometimes there are certain cases where um, Hasbro wants Wheel of Fine to draw Princess Twilight for that duration because there's going to be a Princess Twilight promotion. So do it, make it, send it, and okay it, and then sell. That's the extent that I heard she talk about. 
Well, in that case, it would be the case of uh, fan art being promoted to official artwork. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it's, it, it's approved by Hasbro. It's as official as a, a spin-off can be. Because, of course, it, this, it's not going to be an official thing that represents the original series because we, not, we are never going to see Derpy riding on A201 from Robocop going, put down your muffins, you have 20 seconds to comply. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's kind of a funny, silly thing that I'm pretty sure Hasbro is okay with. Yes. True, and I will put it on the same level yeah, as Yeah, it's a t-shirt. I mean, I, I hate to get real here, but it's a t-shirt. And t-shirts get away with a lot of stuff. No, true. But, you, you know, th- that's the extent of how fan art versus official art. We all know Hasbro has their staple of official art that we cringe when we see it. But the fan art sometimes do much better. So, c'est la vie, I guess. Well, no, no, no. It's not that it's that so much better. It's that uh, we have more time to get used to it. I remember when I remember on the first days of Pony Buru, before we had Derpy Buru, that uh, Mega Sweet and Cartoon Lion they were posting their humanized versions of Pony characters, mm-hmm. and then John Joseco followed uh, to do his own humanized versions, and people were very very mad. They they didn't like it at all. They hated the humanized ponies, uh, and nowadays people are okay with uh, those humanized versions of ponies from many other artists, not oh, just God. them. So oh, it goes on the it goes on the same route that. Uh, uh, that, that, that's why Equestria Girls was oh, humanized God. because because uh, Hasbro saw the fan art that people were producing and they saw so many humans they were like well maybe this is what they like so we're going to put uh, it so they went ahead and did that I and don't think believe it or not no 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 that's that's how, that's how it was that. that's how no that's no 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 no, 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 no that's how it was yes no, I think no that's that's that's, 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 that's that's Mike 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 uh, look I'm sorry to cut you over but that's absolutely what happened. The guys who work on the comics confirmed it. Mm-hmm. Katie Cook and Andy Price, they were giving an interview for, I think it was uh, Bronicon. They were asked this question, and they said that the Equestria Girls happened because of us. All <laughs> the way down to the human designs of the characters. Because Hasbro saw the fun of the people were producing. Their, their and, all, all, the, all the way down to their, they all having short skirts and the, and the tall boots. You know how many... Uh, faces a design has to go through before it, get, it gets approved. Believe me, like they say, in, uh, if you allow me to paraphrase Argo, out of all the bad designs that they had, that was the least bad. <laughs> well, they had a lot to choose from, that's right. <laughs> if I can add something regarding the debate of fan art versus yes. official art, yeah. and original art versus mm-hmm. derivative art, mm-hmm. um, there are three points of view to be considered, to be considered, and I think we're mostly focusing on one point of view, and that is the point of view of the art appreciator, the people who sees the art. Mm. What does it? How does it, that person feel about um, about the the official art versus the fan art? But there are also two other points of view to be considered: the point of view of the original creator and the point of view of the fan artist. Hmm? Mm. The point of view of the fan artist is, is, is easy to consider for me because I am a fan artist. And we already went over it a bit in this program when you asked me why don't I create new works versus doing, doing derivative works and fan art. Uh, but the third point of view also has to be considered, the point of view of the original creator. <laughs> uh, do you know George Martin? Um, George, George Martin, the guy who created yeah. Game of Thrones. You know, funny yes, thing is that funny thing is that I was when you said like the point of view of the of the cr- original creator, the first name that jumped into my head as an example was George R. R. Martin. <laughs> yes, this guy. Uh, is I was about. Yes, this guy is famous and is also uh, very opposed to the whole concept of fan works and fan arts. Hmm? In. He came to public and uh, in his blog, uh, saying that if um, uh, creators, if creators were talented enough to do good fan art and do and good fan fan fiction, uh, mainly fan fiction, because this is regarding Game of Thrones and the Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, if they were good enough to to do fan fiction, then they they should be doing their own thing and becoming famous on account of it, and they shouldn't be um, standing on the shoulders of giants, so to say. That's a bit too smug to say. That's not really fair. And 
You know, I cannot, I cannot, he, I cannot believe that uh, George Martin said something like that. Uh, but not then not again, only that, James. He, I, I believe, right? He has also taken legal action against people who wrote fan fictions of uh, Game of Thrones. He's actually gone to court with people before to tell them, you know, you can't do this. It's my property, which was basically uh, the gist of it. So, a lot of my respect for, uh, you know, George R. Martin has really gone down, really. But that's know, really, that's really, really, really stupid to do. That is not a good idea because fun works are a very easy way to get your all to get new audience into what you do. And uh, uh, there are people who embrace it, and there's people who don't. I think there was also Disney uh, who doesn't like uh, uh, fun works, and they didn't they didn't like fun works in the past. I don't know if you remember this story, but Disney once forced a nursery school to repaint the entirety of their facade because it mm. had Disney characters painted on it. And they were like, you paint that, you don't have the right to put that in there. That was, however, that was the 50s, though. That however, however, time, however though. no, no, it wasn't that long ago because that didn't, ha- that didn't change up until Pixar showed up. Uh, Pixar, John Lasseter in particular, they promote fan works. And when they released Wally, they were asking people to do a lot of fan art of the movie because whoever did the best fan art, they will hire them to, to work for them. And right. I think that's what they did. I think that, I, I think that some of the people who work in Brave, uh, and Monsters University, they were hired after, uh, after, uh, a Wally's fan art contest. So, and well, now that, that John Lasseter is, but not, not, now that John Lasseter is part of the... He has gone down the drain during the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that, that, that's your opinion. Uh, no, I don't know. That, I like the brief. That, I like the brief. I just after, want to get it out After Disney bought Pixar, uh, Disney bought Pixar, and then John Lasseter became creative uh, director of both Pixar and Disney, uh, John Lasseter convinced Disney to be okay with fan works. And that's actually kind of like helping the company because I don't know if you noticed, but ever since Pixar and Disney started working together, like more so than, than, than usual, because I don't know, I don't know if you know about the story of Disney and Pixar. I can tell you after the show, but uh, it, I, I don't know. It's like a lot of things to do with Eisner. I, uh, I blame uh, Eisner a lot for like, uh, a lot Pixar of was person. working, Pixar was working independently on its own and Disney wa- uh, hired them to make eight movies. Technically, Up was going to be the very last movie that Pixar was going to do with Disney. But then Disney bought Pixar, and they wasn't it all fused the, the other companies way No, 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 it wasn't, no, it wasn't the other. It wasn't the other way around. Pixar, uh, Disney bought Pixar because Disney was going bankrupt, so they bought Pixar as the last resource. And then Pixar and Disney did Toy Story three, and the massive outcome of money allowed allowed Disney to buy Marvel, Yay. and now. The, in, the, in, the amazing amount of income that came with the Avengers allowed Disney to recover completely. And so buy like, and Art. Buy, thank God. No, they didn't buy LucasArts. They just bought Star Wars. No, they and bought LucasArts. No, they bought, they bought LucasArts. They, they bought LucasArts. They bought, they bought LucasArts yeah, Luca 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 and LucasFilm. Look at it this way. They have control over Star Wars, Indiana Jones... Captain America, no. Iron Man, anything that has to do with Marvel and anything that has to do with Pixar. Star Wars and Avengers crossover, yeah! <laughs> well, the next Kingdom Hearts game is going to be really interesting. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, they go, oh, they got to go to the Death Star, man. <laughs> but, but. Oh. Oh, next step is for them to buy Hasbro so they can, can oh, try and <laughs> <laughs> put ponies up in that mix. Oh, oh, that, oh. that was in that was in the works. Like they, they, that was in rumors. Yo, back back in the no, days. No, that was a that was a false rumor. I know, yeah. but there was there was rumors, man. But like, has um, Disney was in talks to buy Hasbro, and they like all the fans were I, like, oh, I, I don't God, think no. so. Like like the you know the toy and games industry is yeah. not really Disney's. Section no, of, I know, but, but yeah, no, it is. It is. <laughs> but no, guys, merchandising, the, merchandising. Yes, reasons, but, you know, yeah. does yeah. like yeah. a lot of those one of the reasons, and stuff. It's like one of the reasons why Disney wanted to take uh, wanted to take over uh, Marvel was that they were going to be to take care of the merchandise. Mm. If you look at it, the merchandise of the Avengers is actually really good. Mm. Um, but, however, I I wouldn't mind at all if Disney buys Hasbro. 
Because how bad can that be? Uh, I, I mean, I oh no, we're going to let my little pony be made by the people who did die on King Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast and Tangled. Oh no, get away, get away those, those awesome but, movies that are so good. Get them away from my pony. <laughs> Guys, come on. But you know what? There's one thing I have to say. Um, if Disney did buy Hasbro and got the rights to do something with My Little Pony, think about how many Disney princesses will be converted. <laughs> like Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, and Princess Twilight Sparkle, and also Princess Cadence will be Disney princesses. <laughs> well, well, uh, Princess Leia is already a Disney princess. Yay! So. Wow! Oh, man. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> Twilight Sparkle is going to join the crew. So you've got... Jamie is like, getting rustled. <laughs> everybody, everybody was like, what? Why did you make that brave girl, you know, the new princess? You know, she's not m- murder, right? Murder. She's not even a princess. Uh. And then, you know, Princess Leia. Uh, but people couldn't talk about that because she's technically actually a princess. Mm. And and so is Twilight, so... Mm. <laughs> Yeah, but, but it's gonna I, work. It's gonna work out fine. Really. I think we're um, sidetracking here. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> you know, back on topic. Wow, we do this a lot. Back on topic. It really can't be discussed that fan art for the beginning artists, for the people who are trying to to come up with new things to work on on their on their art. It's like a, a crutch. It's like something that they use to excuse them from having uh, their own, from working their own creativity. They are able to just work on their artistic skills without ev- actually having to be very creative. They can produce impressive works, hmm? Th- stuff that will impress people without having really do much effort in the, the field of creativity. Mm. Hmm? Uh, and uh, and one can one could just say why why ha- why should people rely on that crutch why wouldn't isn't is it while learning to ride a bicycle is it better to use side wheels or just go all out and try to do your own thing without the, without the wheels and try to to ride the bike properly right away. You know, um, That's something to be discussed, I think. True that, true that. But let me just put this this way. Um, my guest last week, Hero of Time, he told me this. His father was asking him, why don't you create your own game? Why do you use the ponies? And the people on Pony Brew told this to his dad. You need an audience to get your game up and running. With this, you get your audience. And with this, you can bring them to other projects that you are building. And if you take a look, see at the link I just showed you. Yeah. This is pretty awesome. You Would you believe me that I say this is done in MS Paint? <laughs> well, there, there are sure uh, some, there is sure some merit in self-limiting oneself. Uh, while creating uh, while creating this kind of works, uh, but is it because of his choice? Does this, he choose to use MS Paint because it's more of a challenge to him? No, he just used MS Paint because it's free. But no, um, uh, no. Uh, not only that, but it's also the style that he's going for the video game. So it's, uh, yeah. no, it, it's it's not only something that comes out of limitation; it comes from creative uh, decision. Yes, but but back to the point is. The reason why you go for fan art first is just to build an audience. And then, after building that audience, you go on to create your own stuff. For example, give me a second, I'm trying to think of who did that in the Pony fandom. Do you guys know? Well, oh, I, right I, now, I we have a, I, I, I have one. I have one. Okay. Um, you guys remember Film Flum Philosophy, the guys who do uh, Rainbow Dash Presents? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Greg and Petty Rep, they are moving on to do their own thing. They are not doing more Rainbow Dash Presents, and they're going to do their own animations and their own projects. Uh, what they did is they used this fandom as a springboard to be uh, to get their own projects going. That's what some people should start doing, to be honest with you. Uh, you can only run the pony uh, the pony train for as long as you can until yeah, but people the, people have been the riding the Sonic train for twenty years now. Oh God! <laughs> Look at where they are. <laughs> yeah, precisely. That's what I'm afraid many people are going to turn into. They keep going because Sega keeps giving them things to keep going. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, we're going to do Sonic Generations. Here's the Sonic anime. We're going to release another Sonic game. We're going to remaster this game. Sonic 4 Episode 2 for the 360. <laughs> Stop it. You're feeding a fandom that is not helping you in the slightest. That's, that's the problem with Sonic, the Sonic fans. You don't, don't you dare comparing the Sonic fans to the Bronies. <laughs> Oh, I, compare, I, not, I can and I will. We're not, we are not that bad. We are, we are not that bad. We are not that bad right now. No, no, no. no, we no. Could clearly, no clearly, James, so clearly, so Tony fans we are the, the same as Naruto bad. fans, okay? We're comparable to Naruto fans. Mm. Get it right. Oh, boys. But you know we are, what? Oh, we, we, are, we are slightly comparable to furries in that, is, in okay. that extent. But to you, the, you to the furry side that is not psychotic. <laughs> but, but you know what... Um, to get back on track, my god, we go off track of all a lot. Mando Pony or Andrew Stein, he does his original songs and he does his pony songs. And you know what? That's how he rolls. He used the fandom as a springboard to get out there. If people enjoy his work, they go follow him. If not, they just stay where they found him. That's it. But you see, what about the point that the only reason why these people are famous is because they're doing work inside that fandom so once they leave the fandom the people the original fans may not have a reason to follow him anymore if you know what well, i mean okay let me just put it like this people in general latch onto certain things that we like naruto bleach sonic Mega Man, whatever it is but since there's ponies okay we watch the ponies we enjoy the ponies but if that person does something let's say say a song dubstep song we don't usually like the dubsteps but when we heard a pony in it, we are open to the world of dubsteps. Now, how far is the extent of enjoying the dubsteps is up to that person. But now, because of one person who listened to a pony dubstep, he is now open-minded to listening to other people's dubstep. And so on to Eurobeat and so on to other things. Like you, Kitsu, you mentioned that you do not like the Mega Man because it was stupid hard. But you gave... Mega Pony a chance because it has ponies. It's well, I, I just want to say that during this entire conversation, I've been fiddling around with it, and I have died about twenty eight thousand times already. That's about normal. That's about normal. Don't worry, yeah. that's okay. So that's you know, that's I've, 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 uh, I've I've given up, and I'm just you know, look, I'm just looking for things on my. That's not a word. Put it in my mouth. <laughs> You know what, James? You know what, James? Let why don't why don't I challenge you? We we both play the game right, and we we'll see who finishes it first. How about that? I, I don't it. need to challenge you to prove that I'm better than you. <laughs> but I love it. But I you just know. need to say it. <laughs> but but you know, with with all this talk about fans, fan art, or fan work versus official work, it's going to be the same argument over and over. And the result, well. How different it may be, it's still going to be the same. It's a matter of opinion and a matter of preference. Well, Mike, I got a question for you then. Go ahead. Let's say you start, right? Um, I mean, for your case, you are an artist. And art is um, it's a lot easier to you know, uh, be, how do you say, assimilated uh, <laughs> than, than the other forms of artistry. And... How difficult do you think it is to avoid being stonewalled into a certain kind of, you know, a thing or a license? Like, let's say you do a lot of My Little Pony artwork, right? What happens if you get stuck in that? Like, you know, you want to progress, you want to move on. But the shadow of, you know, I started doing fan work for My Little Pony is always going to be hanging over your shoulder, right? Do you think that's going to be a problem? I see what you mean, and I agree that that is quite a problem, because uh, people get hooked on the on the um, the response that is given to them by the the people who, who see their arts, and uh, if they're moving to another uh, other different themes from the ones that made them popular, uh, stops stops bringing them the same response that they had when they did fan art, then they will be very tempted to go back to, to that same feeling they had when they, when they did that pandering kind of work for the fans. 
I understand that for that reason, it can be very challenging for an artist to let go of a particular theme that ends up uh, holding them back in their variety and the, the development of their own creative uh, liberties. Regarding what you just said, I just want to say this. Demo real. <laughs> If you guys remember Doug Walker, the guy who created the Nostalgia Critic, uh, he ended the Nostalgia Critic uh, a year ago or so, and uh, when he tried to move on to another thing, he called it Demo Reel, he got a very poor response, so he had to bring back the Nostalgia Critic. So it's difficult yes, to move on from that. Yeah, yeah beca- uh, and that, that kind of that. feeds into what I was saying you know, earlier, which is basically when you're stuck in you know, doing the things, why do people like you? Right? Why, why are people following a certain artist? Like, is it because of the artist or is it because of the stuff that he delivers? Do you, mm. do you appreciate the actual person behind the art or do you just actually appreciate the kind of things that they do. Like, uh, I think it's a little bit different in different types of media. Like, for example, you know, good names in cinema, for example. Like, you see, you know, names like Edward Norton or uh, that Batman guy, whatever, right? And and when his name appears in other things, like, you know, Inception, oh, you know, Memento, you're like, oh, it's going to be great, you know, despite the content of it. But then mm. there are also those people who just watch the, the Nolan Batman films because it's Batman, right? <laughs> And then they, they couldn't care less about any of the other things that Nolan has done. So, like, in a fandom such as My Little Pony, I fear, and I may be wrong, but I fear there's a lot more people who watch other uh, artists because of the content and not because of the artists themselves. Not to say that they don't get exposed. Like, uh, you do get followers. Definitely they exist. But what happens... And, and this is the question that I want to postulate to you uh, about the subject, Mike. But what happens if when you enter a fandom and when you start off by doing works within a fandom, what happens if they only, you know, the fandom is only responsive because of the material rather than the person? I think that might be happening to me. Um, I am very... I'm always following the people. I'm always following the rhythm at which the people, uh, at which people follow my my Divine Art Gallery, and I see that uh, I definitely um, get more, much more attention and much more followers whenever I post some uh, some kind of uh, canon character uh, pony art. Uh, that is happening, uh, and it is that is a little frightening to me because I'm I end up being afraid if I have or grow up from this uh, grow up. It's a very very strong uh, strong term, but if I ever want to deviate from this, will I will I be able to keep these people following me? Will I be able to to get this degree of attention? Um, and am am I? For these people, am I only a person who draws ponies with a better than average uh, style or something? Uh, and that is something that that really scares me. And that can be seen by my willingness to try and draw things other than ponies in my gallery. I, I I love drawing ponies. I love this, those characters. I love this franchise. I love the the concepts uh, uh, of ponies for many many reasons. Uh, but I always I I, I, w- I want to try also different things. Hmm? Many of them also uh, based on popular franchises such as the Mario art that and the Pokemon arts uh, that uh, that I've tried to to post to see if I can get if I am able to get a similar response from them than uh, a similar response to what I get from posting pony art uh, and I feel that it doesn't always work and that oh. scares me a little. Well, you know, the thing is that that happens more with, with, uh, within the fandom than when it comes to something official. Uh, for example, M.A. Larson is moving away from doing uh, Pony episodes for Season 4. He's not going to be doing that. Because after finishing Season 3, he started working on his own book series. 
Uh, however, the fandom seems to be really supportive of him, and I've seen <laughs> quite a lot of people wanting to buy his new book series that has nothing to do with My Little Pony, but people want to check Enjoy. it out because of his connection with his with the the TV show. Um, the th- the same thing happens with Lauren Faust. She moved away from doing Pony, and people are interested in her new show, Wonder Over Yonder. Yonder over uh, whatever it's called, it's, <laughs> I think it's called Wonder Over Yonder. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's Wonder Over but, Yonder. That's... But when it co- when it comes to fans. To, to fan projects, that's way more difficult and way more different. And I have no idea what it is. And maybe it's because the perception that people say something official is more legit than something that is made by someone in their basement, <laughs> which is an unfair assumption to make. It's expectations, I think, you know, James. It's like what, what people are expecting, what people want to get from stuff. And I'm going to play the argument of the other side as well. I'm just going to argue for both sides. But I think the reason why, you know, a, a lot of your a non-pony pictures don't get as big a response as your pony pictures is simply because your primary audience and your target market is people who go there to look at ponies. Yes, I so, agree with that. Yeah, so uh, maybe it's if not. You a, go, if you go uh, not look at uh, an artist, if uh, look at an artist like John Joseco, uh he's been doing stuff, well, cheesecake stuff mm. for years and years before he got into ponies. But his popularity only exploded once he started going for ponies. I have to say this: in John Joseco's case, the reason why he can or has been getting popular or doing whatever. It is he's doing and being successful at it is simply because his audience, how many audience he has times his interests versus their interests. And if you think about it, I'm going to say John Jeseko has more than 10,000 followers. Yes. And he's very good at juggling all that attention. Well, he's been very good at it. At the same time, it's like this. Like I said, I like the Mega Man. I like the Pokemon and I also like ponies. Now, out of 10,000 people, there's got to be at least 9,000 of them that have the same interest that I do. So the chances of people enjoying what I do is high. In your case, Mike, I, I got no idea how many followers you have. I'm not going to compare you to... Uh, about 500. Yeah, I'm not going to compare you to John, but... You have five. Okay, you said you have five hundred, and you like the ponies, you like the Pokemon's, and you like the Nintendos. I like many things more, and I will draw uh, mostly anything that people ask me to draw if I if I if I'm able to do it. And, and as long as it's cute, I, yeah. <laughs> I like everything cute. Really, <laughs> that is true. And also, okay, you it's five hundred people that follow you, and out of that five hundred people, do they like the things that you like ex- besides the ponies? So you have to keep that in mind because I had a chat with Lionheart yesterday and he said that he lost about 10 followers after posting a tutorial video on how to do his wanted posters. And he was a bit saddened at this fact that he uploaded a tutorial video and he lost 10 followers. He lost 10 followers? Yeah, he lost 10 followers. Because he's telling people how to do cool stuff. Yeah, so that saddened him, but to be honest... Is the internet? This is it. Is the internet? I have a follow-up question um, along the lines of what we've been talking about, and in in the light of all the stuff that we've actually been discussing, do you think then it, it's the best way to get a start in the industry by going through the route of you know the fan works first? Because if you look at trends and if you look at you know, everyone who's basically famous now, very, very few, a minor percentage of people got a start doing stuff like, you know, um, fan works. Okay, let's not talk about Fifty Shades of Grey. That's an entirely <laughs> different thing altogether, right? But like uh, all the creative minds, you know, I'm, I'm, they, did, they didn't get their start by, you know, doing fan works. Not many of them did. You, you know what, Kitsu, I have the perfect person to compare it to. And it's, again, Mr. Andrew Stein, or a.k.a. Mando Pony. He got popular doing his thing, doing songs for the ponies. And it, he got noticed by one Daniel Ingram. And they got to talks. After the talks, he sang for a song in Littlest Pet Shop. So a fan from 
a community, got to work with the show that he... Well, technically not the show, but he got to work with the company who made the show he watched. So, yeah, what you're, what you're saying, it's valid. Fan work do lead to professional contacts. But do you think we're living in, in a new age uh, where, you know, this kind of thing can be shared a lot more freely you know information shows like because of stuff like youtube and you know the freedom of and the ease of which you can get out there into a public space of course it creates a lot of competition oh, yeah. because everybody can do that but, but you know what uh, i think- do i do think uh, before i move on what about mm. you mike do you have anything to say about it Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I have to say that uh, we've come to a point where uh, it can be argued that what matters most ends up not being actual talent by the person. Although that ca- counts a lot, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's um, the, the most important ends up being the ability to make connections inside the, the actual business. Mm, true. Uh, if you know something, it will be much easier to the point where a talent ends up being optional. Uh, how many people we see in entertainment, in media, that are talentless hacks, mm-hmm. but got where they were through con- connections and contacts and uh, people they know and uh, having godfathers or something inside the, inside the industry. That is very... Yeah, funny. Miley Cyrus. And for instance. That's true, that's true. And also, I have to add on something. It's uh, your personality online. It goes back to that again. And a good example of having personality is Maximilian or Miles something. He does a program on YouTube called Assist Me, and he covers the Marvel vs. Capcom games, the, the Killer Instinct games, and also the Injustice games. He covers it, he teaches people how to play the games, and he does less play and stuff. And because of that, he got noticed by Capcom. He also got noticed by the creators of Killer Instinct. And they call upon him to help promote stuff. Like right now, or a few days ago, he promoted the game Killer Instinct. And just because of his interest in the game... Regarding that, I would say that many of my friends who I have talked to about about my doubts regarding uh, the notoriety that I, I get and that there is a perception that I deserve uh, b- because of my work, of course, um, that by this time, with my skill, it would be expected that uh, I would have a lot more attention from the... From the um, from the fandom outlets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, And why hasn't that happened? Because uh, of people's skills, of course, as as you said, uh, of uh, questions related to charisma, to online presence, to the ability of relating to other people. And what I have to say uh, regarding that is that Many people in this fandom and in, in fan art and uh, fan fiction who are very talented and do amazing work quality-wise, uh, what they could use and what I could use as well, I finally came to the conclusion, it's an agent. An agent, a person who can know the right people and who can tell uh, and who can tell what kind of pres- uh, presence it is more adequate to, to get the most, to maximize the attention you get. It's something that is needed by even people with lots of talents. Uh, and is, even people. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. There, there are also certain things that you could do. Is your outlet of promotion, the way you promote yourself... But in the end, it's going to be yeah, but, how but you... But some people don't, just don't have, don't have that, that... Yeah, it, and it's a one-man job, you know, spreading yourself, spreading yourself across things like, you know, having to work with your talent along with promotion, you know, uh, events, you know, doing stuff just to get noticed. It's, it's really not that simple for the one-man show. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, I kind of agree with the... Uh, 
with the group mic here a little a little bit but the but the idea of an agent is really curious like i like that idea it's 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 a funny idea but i kind of actually like it agents agents for people who do fan work you know that's that's something that uh, that, that is the extreme of it but you know for for my show i am listed on ponyville live and that got me some good attention as long as people hear this interview or hear me talk about you, I do hope that you get the extra views. What I'm trying to do here is, well, get you notice. Of course, thank you. You already get a lot of attention regarding our work, but that's because your work is uh, focused specifically in uh, interacting with other people. Mm -hmm. Whereas drawing and writing are inherently very time-consuming and very lonely tasks. Mike, let Uh, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Um, Usually people enjoy art more than podcasts. And podcasts, sometimes it could be a 15-minute engagement or it could be a three-hour engagement. So, uh, mileage may vary. <laughs> yes, of course. It also yeah, depends on, the, on, the, on how well the person does his job, right? Oh, yes, that uh, is true. That is why there are, very, uh, me- there are quite some uh, insanely popular podcasts, even though uh, not everyone has the patience to listen two hours, three hours. Uh, of a podcast, there are some that, regardless of that, get uh, a lot of popularity. Whereas uh, a piece of fan art, uh, you you only need an investment of ten seconds to be able to appreciate it. I like true. that word investment because that's exactly what I was thinking as well. It's about investment time and how much you know people want to put into things. But anyway, uh, going back to what I was going to say uh, a bit earlier. Um, and this is the funny thing, but being on this show, the first time I came on this show and, you know, each subsequent time is, was actually the best thing that happened to me in this fandom, like uh-huh. ever, because like, I mean, you know me, I don't promote myself. You know, I do a bit of everything, but I don't tell people that I do any of that stuff, <laughs> That's true. right? Um, so like the, the fact that I've been on your show and suddenly like a lot of avenues suddenly started opening up just because of that little bit of exposure. So honestly speaking, exposure is a great thing, but we don't necessarily have the platforms to do it ourselves because I mean, like, what am I, what was I going to do? Like start my own uh, video show and add more work onto myself. And I, I don't mean this in a selfish way because I think I'm coming across as a little bit like, oh, I'm just oh, using no, no, you. Understand, but understand. Uh, it's it's more like, you know, you do what you do. You you give a lot of us artists and, you know, people in the community a chance to be exposed. And, you know, I have to thank you for that, really. I, I kind of do. I owe you, a, you know, a great deal for for this and... Oh, no problem. I actually, I actually think it sort of, it sort of works. Like, yeah, yeah, you no, know, no problem. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. But anyway, with that mutual understanding, I think we can end the show now. Don't you all agree? That's all right with me. Yeah. One, one final question: If you were looking for talent to come on your show, why did you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Okay, honest. You want, you want the honest truth, or it's just some joke that I have? How about how about neither? So to preserve my you know my good name on the NBS show, and hopefully that I can come back for future episodes where I can annoy more guests. So let's let's not hear the truth. I think the audience does, doesn't need to hear that right now, huh? Okay. But anyway, um, Mike, thank you for coming onto the show. Um, you you have been an awesome guest. <laughs> Uh, thank you for having me, and I hope I I was an interesting guest. Oh, you, oh, very, you are very much. So. You, that was you, that was really fun. You brought up an interesting topic that we need to talk. Of course, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for having me, and until next time, hopefully. Yep, and you're always welcome to come on again. Okay. Anyway, Mike, where can they find you? You can find me in the PonyGaff IRC channel. Uh, at irc.globalgamers.net uh, you can find me as Mike Grey Wolf in the new GAF forums and uh, you can find me at uh, my Deviant Art Gallery at mikegreywolf.deviantart.com alrighty then I'll add that in the show notes so anyway that was our guest Mike Grey Wolf awesome guy awesome artist even if he doesn't admit it 
<laughs> thank, thank you. I'm very flattered. <laughs> no problem. And let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is shout outs. My first shout out goes to you, Mike. Thank you for coming on and making this show 20% smarter. <laughs> You're very welcome. And well, thank you, James. You're welcome, my friend. To you too, Kitsu. Yep. But anyway, what about you, Charlie? Any shout-outs? Uh, sorry, what about you, Kitsu? Any shout-outs to give out to? You just call me Charlie. I'm sorry. <laughs> you just call me Charlie. Oh, my God. Yeah, change your show notes, man. All right. Yeah. Um, well, um, as always, I don't really have that many shout-outs because I don't know that many people. But, yeah, shout-out to all my friends, um, to you, to our wonderful guests this week. Mike Grey Wolf, and I want to give a shout out to my dad and my mom because they're both my parents. Indeed, you should love your parents. And what about you, James? I want to give a shout out to every single one of you who's here right now for uh, bringing, me, bringing me in and making me have a great time uh, with this uh, podcast, which is brilliant. What about you? Wait, you've asked everyone. No, Mike. Mike still hasn't said anything. And what about you, Mike? Okay, my shout-outs are for the, old po- the whole PonyGaff community and for my wonderful wife. Oh, that's so sweet of you. And if you, any of you bronies out there who are married, love your wife. Yeah, my wife is also a brony. I'm so lucky. Woo-hoo! I do remember that. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow.gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at mbshow.com, Daniel at mbshow.com, and charlie at mbshow.com. As for Twitters, you can reach the show account at the MBS Show. Sweetie Bot will interact with you, talk about the show, and will tweet stuff that she likes. I don't know what she likes. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I will tweet pictures about food, talk about things I like, and, well, that's about it, I guess. And also you can reach Dan at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. And James? Oh, you can check me out in uh, James Cork uh, at James Cork on Twitter. You can check my DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com and you can follow my Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. And what about you, Kitsu? Do you have the Twitters or any way they can find you? No, no. Unfortunately, I'm a non-social creature, so I don't have the Twitters or the Tumblrs or stuff. But you guys can find me on my Film Fiction account, which is where I do my, most of my stuff, which is uh, filmfiction.net slash user slash kitsunerisu. Or, and this is new, uh, mm. someone <laughs> persuaded me to open a DeviantArt gallery uh, last week, and I have one picture in it! Yay! <laughs> You can check it out at kitsunerisuart.deviantart.com because someone actually already has my name and I don't know who it is, but they can. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll be sure to link it in the show notes because this is new. <laughs> it's, it's brand new. There's nothing in it. Don't bother. Come visit me on my film fiction account where you can read cool stories and, you know, just send me a message. I'll, I'll always respond. So true feel free to true say that. hi. And you know what, Kitsu, here's a, here's a suggestion. Post your fic in DeviantArt. Maybe you can have more followers there? More viewers? Who knows? I don't I don't know if they accept, like, 120,000 words. Yeah, they do, they do. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> they do, they yeah. do accept uh, fan fiction. Yeah, I write, I write a lot. Like, like, most of my stuff is in, you know, the, the tens of thousands. So, um, Kitsu, they do. They do. Do they now? Yeah. Do they? Yep. Another avenue to get more clients. Yahoo! Well, clients Maybe. Like we're, we're going back to that thing where I don't like to promote myself. So. <laughs> uh, you need an agent. <laughs> I need an agent. Can I hire you? <laughs> Not at all. I could use one myself. <laughs> okay, we'll be each other's agents and something will happen. Something bad will happen. <laughs> I can't, I can't see the spell. Hey, what about you, Mike? Do you have the Twitters? I have a Twitter, but I never use it, so it's not, it's no use okay. promoting here. No, no problem then. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been James Cork. Kitsune Risu. And this is Mike Ring. 
and we'll see you next week. I may have or may not have an agent by then. See you guys. Bye. See you. Thank you. Yeah, I want to ask a question. If if Hasbro is actually looking at what the fandom's producing and making official stuff based on the trends, where are all the My Little Pony? Po- That's not a 
word? Movies because <laughs> I've been waiting <laughs> for ages for an official My Little Pony. That's not a word. And it's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> well, I'm very upset. No, no, no. I will tell you. So, I will tell you something. When Hasbro turns from toy company. That's not a word. Company. We are going to see all the. That's not a word. Uh, fa- uh, J- fan James, movies. Japan <laughs> has My Little Pony now. Like the. That's not a word. Should be flooding in, like in, like I, I. I got all my... That's not a word! Man, now in like... Hasbro's online toy store, you can, you girls can order the new Big Mac. <laughs> it's 20% bigger, I mean, and now it comes yeah. to... That's not a word! <laughs> is this part it going to be cut out Yeah, it's going to get cut. It's going to get cut really hard. <laughs> Have you guys watched the end? That was a huge build-up for... That's a... not a word! To be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, Norman, you should, you should keep this bit, because you know what? It's fun. Norman, Norman, people are going to notice that the voice clip is going to be the same as last week's. I'm just going to put that out there. They're going to notice. Right? I know. You might want to put a joke there. Like, like seriously, you you, you got to record some, you know, dialogue uh, off camera and be like, you know, okay, so he had to leave, but we're going to just use him from last week. So, pe- you know, people know that you're actually using... I, stuff I, for last I, week. I, if, I if not, people are people are going to point that out, and that's not going to be. But I do just, like that. I do like that because yeah. uh, if they do point it out.